Hey there guys, so I want to do just a quick little overview and actually show you how to use both of these tools because uh, quite honestly we were talking earlier this week uh, about measuring thrust surfaces, measuring uh, you know thrust wear. Obviously if you have a heavy duty clutch on your car, you push in on the clutch, pushes against the thrust surface and well how can you measure that? Well there's a couple ways you can do it. Obviously taking the bearings out of the car we can use a caliper or if we want to be inside the car while the crank's still in the car you can actually use a dial indicator but figured it was a good time to actually show you both of these because quite honestly they both measure in the same unit of measure, in this case thousandths of an inch. So uh, this one actually happens to be a magnetic base, uh, which is really kind of a nice little guy, right? I mean, you can turn this magnet on and off. I mean, you can do all kinds of neat fun stuff with these, but uh, you can attach it to the end of the block, move these two articulating points, or actually there's even a third one here on the dial gauge itself, uh, and move it right to the end of the crank, and then of course be able to go in there and measure what kind of throw you get by prying the crank back and forth. But uh, one of the nice things is, is it actually has this little finite adjustment here on the end. Well, the reason that you have this finite adjustment is so that you can get the end of this needle as perpendicular to the surface uh, as possible. Obviously, the more perpendicular you are, the more accurate your measurement's gonna be. Neat little gauge. These do measure in thousandths of an inch as well as the caliper does the exact same thing. And in fact, these two dials almost look identical. Um, and they actually measure the same way, but this one has a secondary dial on it and I'll show you kind of how this guy works. So for instance, if I were to just take this guy and let's just move it just a little bit, say up to about here, well, I'm just simply at 10 thousandths of an inch, you know, so on and so forth, right? About 30 thousandths of an inch there. Now, if I go all the way around and I pass the zero, let's say I'm about there, well, now I'm at about 110 thousandths of an inch. And in fact, if you notice that little secondary dial is right there at the one, well, that just continues if I keep spinning this guy around. For instance, right there, I'm at about, well, 413 thousandths of an inch. Maybe if you're trying to figure out, uh, Oh, I don't know, uh, the throw on a small bore piston, you know, on a lawnmower or something along those lines. But really neat little tool. They work exceptionally well, uh, as well as these guys do, in fact. Now, I do prefer analog over digital. Uh, digital's great because you can just look at it, but the downside to digital is when you need this thing, you go and pull it out of the drawer six months from now, uh, you're pretty sure your batteries are going to be dead. In fact, I've got one sitting over there uh, with a dead battery in it right now. Um, I love the analog. You can always come in here and, you know, recenter it or re-zero uh, this guy out by just loosening up that little knurled screw. But these are incredibly accurate and they're nice little tools to have couple ways you can measure things. Uh, first and foremost, you do have the thickness measurement. You can measure the thickness right here on the front. You've also got the two back pieces here, which of course you can measure inside diameter, you know, whatever you want to measure there. But uh, you even have on the other end uh, a depthometer, right? I mean, this will actually measure depth. So you can come in there and say, oh, well, you know, what's, uh, what's, how far has my head been ground down or remilled, you know, and you've got a wear surface on there. You can actually measure it with the little depth gauge on the very end of it. Now, these actually measure the same way as a dial indicator, but you'll notice there's no second little dial in here. So if I get this guy, let's say, out to about here or so, well, where am I at? Well, on the slide, you'll notice this is marked zero all the way up to, you know, five, six. Now, keep, obviously, keep coming down. Every time there's an inch, the little counter resets. For instance, if I go all the way out to here, I'm at one inch, 500 and... 12 thousandths, right? Very, very easy to read these little guys. They're not some cryptic wizardry or anything else. They're actually super easy to read. They're incredibly accurate. You know, you just want to keep these guys clean because they are gear based. Let's see if you guys can see that, right? That's actually the little gear that actually spins this little dial, but super nice little components. But let me give you kind of a caveat to one of these things and actually some things to kind of be aware of. Uh, in fact, I'll use this one as, as probably a good example. Got some varying degrees of wear on this thrust surface. Obviously, there's more wear here than there is over here because you can still see the outer layer from one side to the other. Well, if I go to measure this, I would want to measure this here on the inside where it's actually somewhat flat, okay? The reason why is because, well, these jaws are sharp and if you're measuring a soft bodied surface, like for instance, a thrust bearing or a thrust washer, well, you could very well just simply dig into it. So there's the first touch of it, but if I give it a little you know, gumption with my thumb there, I'm actually digging into that external layer of that bearing surface. So just kind of be aware of that. I kind of like using the thicker part because it kind of gives you a little bit wider of an average and just uh, obviously a little bit more accurate unit of measure there. Now, a couple of other neat little points about this guy. 
you don't want to drop them. Uh, they are fairly uh, fragile <laughs> from that standpoint. You don't want to drop them onto the ground. You know, these do have a little plastic face on the bezel, but uh, you know, you don't want to drop it because you do want to keep them nice and straight, nice and level. In fact, most of them come with nice little carrying cases, but just kind of wanted to run both of these uh, through with you guys, show you guys how to use these. Super simple little tools, great little tools to have around the shop. They work for all kinds of stuff. I use this thing like nobody's business. Uh, and if you guys, uh, you know, if you want one of these, uh, go check it out. I'll put a link down there in the description. You guys can go see what these little things cost. They're not very expensive. They're like 20 bucks. I think everybody should have one. But uh, go out there, take a peek at it, see what you think, guys. If you like these videos, uh, like and subscribe. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next one, all right?